Ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to be talking about both Intel and AMD's next generation processors because while there will be big improvements in terms of architecture and we're going to be discussing some of that stuff in this video as well, the main change that I can really say is going to be a big highlight for the next generation is an increase in core count. For example, AMD seems very much intent on raising the core counts from 8 plus 8, so that's 8 uh, cores per CCD up to 12 cores per CCD. So this means we're going to get 24 cores and 48 threads for the highest end flagship Medusa or Ryzen 10,000 or whatever you want to call it lineup. There is a lot of stuff to get through here and we're going to get right into it after this quick sponsored message from AliExpress. AliExpress are running a huge sale but with a difference. Team Up Cash Back is a massive sale which is up to 60% off of all products site wide. But with Team Up Cash Back, you can also get a cash back of between 2 and 10%, depending on how the team setup works. Now, we'll be talking more about the team information in just a moment. But first of all, let's take a look at one of the products which is available on the website right now, which is a KingSpec NVMe PCIe Gen 4 drive that was sent to me for testing. This is available with 46% off of the various capacities. There's a 512 gigabyte model for £31.96, one terabyte, which is the version that I'm using for £48.10, two terabytes for just £82.28, and finally, four terabytes for £160.11. This is an NVMe Generation 4 drive, and as such, it will work great for a PlayStation 5 if you need an easy upgrade, but also excellent for the PC as well, which is actually where I'm using it. For testing, I used Crystal Disk Mark with the default settings, and I scored just over 7 gigabytes per second in read and 6 gigabytes per second in write with sequential 1M Q8T1. And as you can see, the numbers did drop off a little bit with a sequential 1M Q1T1, but it's still great and in line with the official specifications. I also switched to the AS SSD testing, and while the numbers do change a little bit due to how the benchmark workloads will differ, the XG7000 maintains a similar throughput with the highlights being sequential read at around 5900 and writes just a smidgen under 4900, with a total score of around 8300. With all of the cutting edge hardware hitting the market, like Nvidia's eagerly anticipated RTX 50 cards, which of course are starting to launch, AMD's RX9 thousand series which is set to launch in early march now is a great time to consider upgrading your pc and our sponsor are the express provides fantastic ways to save big throughout this year so why not take advantage of AliExpress's team up and cash back to earn money as you make those purchases? All you need to do to join my team, which I'll get to in just a moment, for an instant 2% cash back on your purchases, but you can earn up to 10% cash back by earning points as you shop, and you can save up to £500 on your purchases. If our team score reaches over 30,000 points or more, you will get 4% cash back within 7 working days of the event ending. If our team score reaches 40,000 points or more, then you get 6% cash back within 7 working days after the event ends. And if we score 50,000 points or more, you will get 10% cash back within 7 working days after the event ends. To join my team, it's simple. All you need to do is click the link in the video description and download the AliExpress app if you don't already have it. And you can search for the keyword Red Gaming or you can scan the QR code on screen right now. And that's it. Plus, you can also invite friends and family to join the team. And the more people that we have on the team, of course, that means that you guys can get more cash back. So simply click on the link in the description or scan the QR code to start earning. So then... Both Intel and AMD are allegedly going to be significantly increasing the core counts. And there is a lot of stuff to get through here. But before we do get into the weeds, I just want to give you the common you know, disclaimer that at the end of the day, any of this stuff can change. Now, while the sources do seem pretty confident, particularly with AMD, there is a really big unknown factor with Intel. And that is that not only do you have the fact that the information could simply be wrong, because, well, it's at the end of the day leaks, although I have to say there are several sources, including people from Twitter that are talking about the increase in core count, and we'll get to this stuff in just a moment. The real problem with Intel is that they have been, well, I can't use any other word other than hemorrhaging money. 
And so it's possible that if there's a change in leadership or a change in direction, one of these products could end up being canned or hell, the whole thing could end up being canned for all we know with Intel. But with that said, at this point, it does seem that this is the plan going forward. And we'll start with Intel because it should be the faster of the two to get through. And also, I think it will give you a lot more insight into why AMD have possibly been changing some of their internal plans as well. So I'm told that there are two compute tiles with the Intel Nova Lake um, highest end configuration. That's an 8 plus 16, so that's 8P. 16e and then there's four lp cores as well now this information is from my own sources i've had several people who have told me this information is correct and also jakin on twitter has also said the same thing and jakin has also provided additional clarity and mentioned three different configurations so 52 cores total 28 cores total and then finally bringing up the rear uh, 16 cores total which is a 4 plus 8 plus 4 Core configuration. I'm also told that yes, there is a, a large cache which is going to be on the highest end configuration. Now, whether this is going to be for the 52 core or whether it's also going to be for the lower end variants, it's not 100% clear yet. I think that either way, Intel are going to have maybe some type of X3D cache situation going on, maybe for marketing purposes. And either way, this is 144 megabytes and it seems to be essentially connected to one tile. So even if you have the higher core count variants, it's only gonna be connected to, let's say, tile A. You could basically think of this as similar to what AMD have done with like the 7950X3D or the 9950X3D. The exact technical means on how this works differs slightly, but you can essentially just think of this, you know, just mentally to give yourself a rough image of how all of this plays out. Now, I'm told that both Panther Cove and Arctic Wolf both support APX as well as AVX 10.2. I've had two sources tell me about AVX 10.2, although only a single source has told me about APX. Performance information is still really early at this point, but roughly speaking, multi-thread performance should maybe be about 2x the current generation. With that said, that is a really rough number, so it could be like 2.1, 2.2, or 1.9, whatever. The fact is, it should be significantly higher, of course, simply because the core count simply goes up through the stratosphere. With that said, as for single-thread performance, I'm told that the e-cores in particular are very impressive, and that does seem to be a really big thing with Intel at the moment, just bolstering the e-cores. But as for p-cores, I don't know. It's really too early at this point to talk about IPC exactly or clock frequency, but I imagine it's going to be a fairly solid upgrade. A couple of other small things. The release date, it's not particularly new information, but I'll mention it anyway. The release date seems to be the second half of next year, so that's 2026. As for memory support, 8000 MTS. Uh, but it's also going to be, <laughs> you guessed it, it's also going to be on an entirely new motherboard platform. So, long story short, if you have upgraded to, well, the current generation processors from Intel, like a 265K or whatever, well, too bad. Um, once again, Intel are going to be demanding a new processor as well as socket and motherboard from you. So what about AMD then and Zen 6? Now, I have previously gone on record and said that I believe that the configuration for Zen 6 is almost certainly still going to be 8 cores per CCD. But I was also hearing from some sources, and basically I've mentioned this in previous videos, that yes, some people were telling me that AMD were increasing the core count, but it was honestly very difficult to know whether that was true or not, or whether people were getting confused because of the various iterations of the server processors. And now I'm actually leaning towards the fact that AMD will indeed be increasing the core count. Now, why are they doing this? Well, we'll get more into the technical nuances in just a second, but it seems that AMD are changing the manufacturing process so that even Medusa on the desktop is going to be using the 2NM process. And basically, this means that they have now the, the flexibility to increase the core count. There are some other technical reasons that, again, I'll get into that in just a second. But the whole reason this is allegedly happening is because of Intel. So 
Intel are probably still going to have the multi-thread advantage simply because, again, they have so many cores. But AMD, at the very least, can increase cores a little bit just for, you know, marketing purposes. And I would still make a really good argument that, I mean, 24 cores, 48 threads is probably enough for most people. Let me know if you feel differently. I mean, I mean, sure, there's some folks who are going to want to upgrade to thread ripper or whatever. But just generally speaking, I think 12 cores... Um, per, per CCD is a really nice number. So with that said, let's get more into the technical stuff. So as I mentioned, Ryzen 10,000. I'm assuming it's going to be Ryzen 10,000. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. It could be, I guess, uh, you know, 1050, whatever. Um, it's going to be 12 cores per CCD. It's based on N2P. So that's two CCDs, 24 cores, 48 threads total. From what I can figure out so far, Zen 6 is retaining one megabyte of cache for L2 per core. So one megabyte L2 per core. The clock targets are way too early um, to discuss with any level of confidence right now. I'm told that at 1.1 volts, looking at about 1.15x performance with the shift from uh, N4 to N2P, but AMD may choose to do a VMAX reduction. This is really confusing at, the, at this point. My source isn't certain about whether AMD will do a VMAX reduction or not, but if they do, potentially this could be offset with extra metal layers, but again, they're not 100%. AMD are also going to be moving to a parallel interface, and this could benefit things like reducing the latency and improved bandwidth. So in terms of the I.O., we know, of course, that AMD, and we've heard these rumors for quite some time, that what they're doing with like Sarlacc, you know, the Strix Point Halo processors, this is kind of like a, I don't want to use the word a proof of concept because that's not really technically how they're seeing this, but it's, it's kind of like an early preview, I guess, of what AMD will be doing with the packaging surrounding Medusa and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how Zen 6 is all put together especially with later iterations and you know when we start moving forward now there is also the fact that some folks are thinking oh well in the future you know when RDNA 4 um, uh, APUs come out but this is a slight aside from the Zen 6 stuff this is actually not even in the script but I just want to mention this just real quick because there is a little bit of confusion so of course Strix point Sarlacc is all RDNA 3.5 basically um, however the next generation of APUs from AMD will not be using RDNA 4 to my understanding instead it's going to be moving to UDNA so essentially going to be skipping Maybe something could change, but again, to my understanding, they're not going to be going to RDNA 3.5 to RDNA 4. Instead, it's going to be RDNA 3.5 to, again, UDNA. Now, this is a little bit confusing, and I'm not certain whether this is strictly for the servers, but I'm also told it's for the desktop as well. So I'm told that the L3 cache is now essentially... The best way of describing it is it's all essentially X3D. So the CCDs basically sit on top of the tile, and so there's no L3 cache for the actual CCDs themselves. Essentially, it's, again, the CCDs are sitting on top of it. Memory support appears to be the same 8,000 MTS as what we have with Nova Lake. And the release date for Medusa is the second half of 2026, with mobile being the first quarter of 2027. Now, obviously, uh, the next generation Ryzen, Zen 6, that is still going to be on the AM5 platform. AM6 is possibly going to be for Zen 7, although, frankly, at this point, no one's 100% confident on that. So I'm saying that as kind of like a, a probably. Um, it seems that if AMD does introduce... <sighs> AM6 or whatever it ends up being called, I mean, likely it's going to be AM6. Um, they're going to wait for the introduction of faster memory, like DDR6 or LP, um, LP DDR6 or something like that. But who knows? Now, to my understanding, uh, AMD are going to hold off on AM6, assuming it is AM6, until uh, DDR6 is, 
well, mainstream. The thing is, when DDR6 eventually comes out, first of all, it's probably going to go to servers and it's going to be pretty expensive. So it's very possible that AM6 is going to have, sorry, AM5 is going to have quite a long shelf life. But this is still quite far out into the future and who knows what's going to happen by the point, you know, that this actually releases. But it's just kind of a quick FYI that yes, it is going to be on the AM5 platform for the next generation of Ryzen processors. So it's a really good argument that if you haven't jumped to AM5 and you are considering it, you're going to be pretty good in terms of an upgrade path. Um, then again, you can also make a really good compelling argument if you have something like a 5800X3D or a 12900K or whatever, it's probably going to be enough for quite some time anyway if you're doing gaming as your primary focus, but, you know, just kind of throwing it out there. It's going to be very interesting, to be honest with you, to see how the marketing around this um, from AMD is handled. To my understanding, the, you know, the higher cash variants of Intel should actually benefit quite decently with gaming as well. But with that said, from what the general consensus at this point seems to be AMD should have a single thread advantage. With this said, it's way too early to know. I'm certain some benefit, so some workloads, excuse me, are going to benefit more for AMD and others are going to benefit more for Intel. With that said, AMD have just consistently been absolutely kicking butt at the moment. It's going to be very interesting to see what the sales figures are like of the 9950X 3D versus the 9800X 3D. I think that a lot of folks are still going to be sticking to the 9800X 3D. Um, because, again, if you're doing gaming as your primary focus, that's more than enough threads. But uh, <sighs> it's going to be a very interesting year, I think. Um, I'm going to be very curious to see what happens when AMD does actually finally release Zen 6. I think CPUs, Zen 6 is actually um, one I'm actually really excited for, simply for all of the new packaging technologies and so on. I'll be also extremely curious to see how well, especially for the Intel side of things, the cores can simply be fed. Yes, they are moving to that DDR5, you know, 8000 MTS memory, which is going to be beneficial, but at the end of the day, if all of those cores are being fully loaded with different, you know, different tasks, there's still a lot of memory bandwidth. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.